Ouch! Why is it so noisy? There's a bus going by. Let me give give me two seconds, guys. Two seconds. Okay. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to this little corner of the internet. If you're new here, welcome to you too. Welcome to the family. Yeah, I'm really happy that you've stumbled in here and that you found me. And I hope that you'll stay. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> anyways, if you've clicked on this video, is that you want to know the best resources to learn anatomy as a medical student. And you have clicked on the right video, my friend. Yes, you have. So let's dive into this. Just like the video that I've done on the best resources for a first year medical student for pathology, physiology, and pharmacology. This video is also going to be separated into three different parts. We are going to be looking at first internet resources because these are the resources that I use the most personally. Then we'll be looking at textbooks and finally we'll be looking at miscellaneous resources that are still very important to my eyes but they just don't fit into any other category, so they're going into the miscellaneous category. Just as the previous video that I've done about resources, these resources are only the ones that I personally use, but all of my medical student friends use different ones, and the ones that they use sometimes I hate. So take what I'm saying to you with a pinch of salt, take it as, you know, something more that you can add in as you're looking through the internet and figure out which sources are the best for you. So with that said, let's go and let's dive into the internet resources. So for the internet resources, we're going to be separating them into YouTube channels because I just feel that the internet is so big and diverse that we need to have subcategories for this category. So we'll look at first the YouTube channels and then we are going to be looking at websites. So let's start first with the YouTube channels that I watch to learn anatomy. So the first YouTube channel that I really like to watch is called Sam Webster. He is a professor in a UK medical school and I think he teaches anatomy there or something like that. But anyways, on YouTube, he teaches anatomy. He does a lot of different vlogs as well, but we're using him for the anatomy. I'm not going to lie. And so he teaches anatomy quite well. He is actually in his anatomy lab in his university and he uses all of the different models, the plastic models that are there to actually teach us in quite a lot of depth the anatomy of that zone. Sometimes the models are lack a lot of detail, but he will add that detail with his own explanations, which is quite good. And I quite like that he just does in quite a fun way it's quite easy to watch his videos it's you know quite enjoyable i like watching his videos and it does teach me quite a lot about anatomy his videos are also quite targeted and easy to find meaning that you will maybe find a video with the forearm and it will be telling you that in this video will you will see the muscles the inner the innervation the blood the blood supply and all of that or it will be telling you this video is only the muscles, this one is only the blood the blood vessels, this one is only the innervation. So you can kind of very easily know what you're getting from the video, which sometimes is quite difficult on YouTube to actually know with just the title what will actually be in the video. And for him, it's quite easy to find. So I quite like that. So that's the first resource that I use for anatomy on YouTube. The second one is one that I, kind of, that I found quite late and I actually talked about it on my Instagram. You should go follow me there. And it is actually quite a really, a really, really good a channel, at least for the forearm and the upper arm. It, when I was kind of in doubt and just lost with my anatomy of the arm and just wanted a really quick refresh. These videos are really, really short, but go straight to the point, give you all the knowledge you need, give you the, I remember that I used it as a site for the arm. So like the muscles of the arm, the innervation, the blood vessels and all of that. And it just is really, really concise, precise, but in depth knowledge. You get everything you need in this video, or at least most of what you need from these videos that last, what, three to five minutes each. They are really, really good, and I really recommend them. They're great. The guy also doing the videos is ambidextrous, and I find that really cool. He writes with both hands as he's doing it, and I find this quite fascinating and cool. I want to be ambidextrous too. Moving on <laughs> to the next one, which is going to be Ninja Nerd. He also does do um, some anatomy videos. It is not the bulk of his channel at all, but for the major organs, like the heart, the lungs there will be a few videos that you can find there that are often quite good he also uses models so if you prefer to have a real raw view of the actual real muscles in a real human body they're not really your go-to and i would argue that sam webster usually 
does a better job at explaining with models than Ninja Nerd. But that's just my personal opinion. The next one is Armando and he does also videos about anatomy. Again, more the bigger, less niche topics of anatomy like the heart, the lungs. I don't think he really does muscles and all of that. But his videos often quite go, go into a lot of depth as well. It isn't his same old, like the same format of him explaining and drawing at the same time what he is saying. Um, so they're also quite good. There are also sometimes videos that I watch to have a bit more knowledge about the anatomy. Not usually my go-to though, but they are always available if I need them. So here's another resource that you may like and actually make it your go-to. We're all different people. Next, the next one that I use as well is Anatomy Zone. Anatomy Zone uses a app that actually has a lot of the anatomy on it that you can kind of tailor if you just want to see this muscle, if you just want to see the arm, if you just want to see... You can basically just customize what you want to see on the screen and the person just goes through the customization and explains to you as... Um, he's moving along the app model of the human body. It is often quite good to have that if I feel that I'm lacking information with the other resources that I have or if I just want a quick refresh because those videos are often quite short. So this is another, you know, another resource that I used. Not always my go-to, I'm not going to lie. They're not necessarily my go-to to learn anatomy, but if I feel that I need a really quick refresh and I need to just understand it quickly because, for example, I have not done my pre-reading for anatomy, I will be watching these videos and kind of binge watching them and then watching Armando and a lot, a few others just to gather like a good knowledge of the topic and not look dumb in my class. <laughs> yeah. And the last one is not a specific channel. It's more so something that I quite sometimes like, especially getting closer to like the dissection or closer to my um, prosection lab time. I quite like at times to watch prosection videos. So I would like, uh, sorry, dissection videos. So I would write, for example, heart dissection on YouTube, uh, human heart dissection on YouTube, and then look at the videos that maybe have the most views or watch a few of them and see which one I prefer. Cause I'm, for this, I haven't watched enough to have a really big opinion on a specific channel that I would like to recommend to you. So I would just say that sometimes looking at dissections of the actual organ or whatever you're looking at is quite useful to get better knowledge and actually properly adapt what you've learned from the models that are always really nice, pretty, colorful, detailed, very, very symmetrical, and then applying it to the human body that is just one color, not detailed, rugged looking, you know what I mean. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. So it is good to sometimes watch dissection videos before to not be that taken aback when you actually go to dissection or go to prosection and just not know where you are at all. At least if you've watched a few videos like that before, then you can get to understand a bit better and have a few landmarks that you can orientate at least yourself from what you're looking at. So we're done with the YouTube section. Moving on to the websites that I often use. The website that I often use is called Acklin's Human Atlas. It is a human atlas made out of videos um, made by, I think, Professor Acklin. And um, our medical school has a subscription for us, so it is free. I don't know if most medical schools have that, but if you do have that in your medical school, please, please, please take advantage of it. It is a great resource. The videos often last three to four minutes long each, and the professor actually goes through really well-defined dissections with you and shows you specifically what you're looking at at this moment, where you're looking at this moment, points it to you, adds and takes off layers, moves the thing around, um, the pro section around it is a really really good resource and if you have access to it please use it it is my go-to before anatomy labs i will always have watched those videos probably either a few hours before or the day before they are amazing and it really really allows you to vividly see what you're looking for when you do get to anatomy lab because you've already seen it on a real person and explained in such easy ways that's kind of very similar to the dissection videos just that this one is very professionally made and then the other website that i personally don't use that much unless yeah i really don't use it that much it's called teach me not to me a lot of people use it it's very easy it gives you you know breaks it down very 
like it's mostly text there are some images but it's a lot of text and it breaks it down to very basic things that you need to know about anatomy i personally don't really like using this website let me dare say it, it seems a bit too simple i feel that i would i when i found myself looking at it it was because i did not understand the basics or i wanted to go back to the very basics and then i used that website but it does seem a bit too simple for the depth that I want to go to for learning anatomy. And also our teachers told us that the, oftentimes there was mistakes on it. So kind of use it to your own risks, to be fair. But yeah, it is a website that a lot of people swear by. So I'm still going to include it here, but not my go-to. Now we can move on to the different textbooks that I actually use for anatomy. And compared to the previous video that I've done about pathology, physiology and all of that, I use textbooks quite a lot more, I would say, for anatomy because we are actually asked in our medical school to read specific pages before our classes in anatomy, so I feel kind of forced to use textbooks in that sense. So the textbooks that I use are Snell's, the anatomy textbook. It's quite good. I feel that sometimes it lacks a bit of colour, but quite simple to understand. There's also more in Dali. This textbook is also quite good. A bit more colour, a lot more colourful than the other than Snell's. Goes into quite a lot of detail. Sometimes it can be a bit difficult to follow, especially if you haven't seen a video or an overview before. To just read that, it's a bit difficult to visualise it. But it still has quite a lot of diagrams, um, it has also quite a few tables to talk about blood vessels, where they're going, what, they're, what they are actually supplying, or muscles, where they originate, where they insert, what is their action, and all of that. So it is quite, still a really good um, textbook, and I probably could say that this is the textbook I use the most out of the textbook I'm going to mention today. And then the other textbook could be the Grey's Anatomy textbook. I heard that was quite good. Personally, I've never used it, but it's quite good. So yeah, these are the textbooks that I use for anatomy. And now we can move on to the miscellaneous section of the video. For the miscellaneous section, we're going to be talking about Ankydex because anatomy is one of those things where it is the same all over the world. If you learn in Italian and French and Spanish in the US, in the UK, it is always going to be anatomy. A body is a body, so it's not going to change. So I often use Anki decks to actually learn anatomy and pre-made decks because I do not have the time to make my own decks and some people have made great ones before me, so I will use them. I will use their hard labor to my own benefit <laughs> and you should too the ones that i use are the michigan university blue link anki deck it is a deck that has actual photos of the actual human body and you just have to identify what is shown where so it is really good to get you really good at identifying the real human body and the real structures rather than just models which I really like that because in anatomy lab, when you are in OSCEs, you do not have models. You have the actual, at least in my university, you have the actual body part. So you need to know what it actually looks like in real life and not just on a nice, perfect photo that you found online. So the other deck is called Dope Anatomy. I don't really use it as much, but I know that some people swear by it and use it all the time. I pers this personally is not my favorite one. And the other one that I use a lot as well is the Anato King deck. And it is really good, for, at least for muscles, because it has the innervation, the innervation, insertion, origin, action of the, each muscle with closes. If you don't know what Anki is, please just watch my Anki video. I go into quite a lot of depth into how to use Anki, what it is and all of that. So you have all of your answers there. So yeah, I really like using these three decks. These are the decks that I use. And just as a side note, if you prefer to just use paper flashcards, they exist. And a lot of, I know a lot of my medical student friends actually use the paper versions. So they are the gray anatomy flashcards that exist. And as well, the Netter's anatomy flashcards that are also quite good that I know a few people use and they really like being able to look at the slide and then looking behind with an actual tangible paper. So these are also other options that you can use. And the last thing I'm going to be talking to you guys about today for the anatomy resources that I use is called an app is an app and it's the complete anatomy app and again our medical school very kindly bought us this app to use and it is great and if they don't renew the subscription I am probably going to take the subscription 
from my own money because it is just amazing you actually can add any layer of the human body so you can have the skeleton or just parts of the skeleton and then add specific muscles to it and then on the side you can actually have a lot of information about the actual structure that you clicked on so let's say I'm looking at the piriformis muscle if I click on that then I'm gonna have information about the name of the muscle the insertion the origin the action the blood supply I'm gonna have information about you know just text about it and also you can have you have extra videos about what's how it actually contracts so you can actually get a very vis visual information of how the muscle works and yeah, it is just a really, really great resource. And all of the resources that I've talked about, I have always had Complete Anatomy next to me, open or just really on hand if I needed to have extra information or visualize what was written on the textbook, what was written on the website or just the video generally, because you can just swirl things around, uh, zoom in, zoom out. It is just great. If you want to have maybe a tutorial about how to use Complete Anatomy, I would be quite happy to do one for you guys. I think I'm done with all of the different resources that I used for anatomy. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please, please, please subscribe to my channel, like this video and share this video with other people that could benefit from it as well. Share it with your medical student friend that, you know, wants to know a bit more information about how to learn anatomy. Share it to your struggling medical student friend that just hates anatomy because I personally love anatomy, but I know that a lot of people hate it. So just share that video to make things a bit easier for them. Um, so yeah, I'm done. I'm done rambling. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you for watching this